Hi! Welcome to the Dairy Hour Podcast, where rural charm meets personal growth. Join us as we milk every moment for wisdom, self-improvement, and mental wellness. I'm your host, Val Levine, a rural dairy farming mom with a passion for filling hearts while never forgetting to fill my own cup. Get ready for insightful conversations, empowering tips, and a splash of fun and laughs, of course. Let's cultivate growth, nourish our minds, and embrace the journey together. This is the Dairy Hour Podcast, where every episode is a breath of fresh air and the inspiration you need to be your best self. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Dairy Hour Podcast. I am your host, Val Levine, and today we are bringing you a special episode about Adopt-A-Calf with very soon being June is Dairy Month. I figured this would be a fun little feature to have on the podcast. I'm actually joined by my first returning guest, Alice Crothers, and I'm also joined by Brittany Snyder, the Center of Dairy Excellence. So Brittany is on the administrative end of Adopt-A-Calf, and Alice is on the farmer end of Adopt-A-Calf here in the Northeast. And I'm so excited to hear their experiences and how they became involved with Adopt-A-Calf and how you could potentially become involved as either an adopter or a farmer. So uh, Alice, go first and introduce yourself. That would be great. Yeah, first I want to say thanks, Val, for having me back. Um, My name is Alice Crothers, and my husband and I, Caitlin, are the eighth generation dairy farmers of Long Green Farms in Rising Sun, Maryland. And... I would tell you a little bit about myself, which is I didn't grow up on a dairy farm and I didn't grow up in agriculture and I moved to the farm in my early 30s. But as as I mentioned, my husband is the eighth generation. And so when we moved here, my desire was to be a stay at home mom. And my husband asked if he could lean on in to me for some like business support and help. And I found myself being a very vocal advocate in the industry. And we have three young girls that we're raising to be ninth generation dairy farmers. And this is my second year as a host farm for the adopt a Cat program for the state of Maryland. And we have quite a few schools in Delaware also. Awesome, Alice. I'm really excited to hear more about your experience. Brittany, do you want to give us a little introduction of yourself? Yeah, absolutely. So I am Brittany Snyder, and I am the programs manager for the Dairy Excellence Foundation. I've been with the foundation for about six years, but I got to the foundation because of just that ultimate drive for the dairy industry by growing up on a dairy farm. Um, I'll be honest, growing up on that dairy farm actually probably um, made me interested in other things like the arts for a long time, thinking that dairy just didn't have a future for me. Um, But very quickly realized that uh, in college when I went for ag business and I didn't have a plan, um, I realized how much I loved the dairy industry as I was learning more about it on a higher level. And so then I completed my degree at Del Valley University and um, had the opportunity to internship as a dairy princess for a year. And I was on the state team and met my current employers, plus just many amazing people and had the opportunity to mix my passion for education and dairy um, for a year and realized that's what I want to do the rest of my life. So fast forward then um, a couple of years until I got the job at the center in 2018. um, And now I've been here for six and a half years and love the opportunity that I've gotten uh, managing the adopt a program. That used to be about 1% of my job when I first started, um, but it's grown to like 60 or 70% of my job now just as the program continues to grow. And I, I love the opportunity that people connect me with, just like Alice. Awesome. Thank you, ladies, so much for joining me today. This is going to be such a fun conversation. So, Brittany, do you, on, you know, what are some of the main goals of the Adopt a Calf program? What are some of the, um, you know, how did it get started? Yeah, absolutely. Um, we're talking 12 years ago, before I even came around to the center, it actually started out that my boss's son came to, uh, 
came home from school and said, hey, we adopted a cougar. And my boss at the time was the communications manager said, man, if you can adopt a cougar, we can have a program where you can adopt a cow um, and started at very small scale with just like 20 teachers in Pennsylvania. She has a farm, so she used her own cows. Um, and then 12 years later, we are now nationwide. We have 34 host farms, 40,000 teachers, and, and it's amazing. But, you know, that ultimate goal was how can we build trust in people um, about the dairy industry? And how do we help people feel knowledgeable about the dairy industry? So when they're going in that grocery store and we've got these kids old enough to have that purchasing power in the grocery store, how do we help them make those great, healthy, safe decisions for their families? Um, and so we find that the adopt a Cow program can help build that trust, create that link, um, build that story for people um, so they can become, you know, our ultimate purchasers in the grocery store choosing real dairy. So that would be the main goal of why, why adopt a cow even exists and continues to grow and, and thrive. That's great. What a great program. And I've seen so many positive things come out of this program. Um, Alice, what are some of the main reasons that you were, you know, driven to participate in the adopt a calf program? Yeah, so I moved to a dairy farm in my early 30s, and I was that very disconnected consumer. So I was a mom buying food for my children, for my family at the grocery store, and never thinking about where that food came from. And when we moved to the farm, I realized how little I actually knew about how food was produced. And I didn't have like negative connotations about how food was produced. I literally never thought about it. So my desire to participate in um, the adopt a calf program is really to try to connect consumers to producers. And we're talking lifelong consumers. So when you work with educating children, you are reaching you are reaching those consumers that are able to ask their parents, but one day will have their own purchasing power. And I thought if I could help relate kids to agriculture at a younger age, that I would have a longer impact um, on reaching those consumers. Awesome. And I also was very much like in the infancy teaching, my you know, knowledge about the dairy industry. Yeah, so I love the fact that it's like you're teaching, you know, you as a kid almost that doesn't really know where your food is coming from and you're basically getting that lifelong relationship with them. That is really, really cool. Um, and it kind of brings the program full circle, if you will, being not raised on a farm, uh, but being a part of it, you know, from such, from a farm that has such deep roots being eight generations in. So that's really, really exciting. Um, you know, can you walk us through a typical, like, cycle of adopt a calf um i'm not sure who wants to answer that but if one of you ladies wants to take that sure uh, adopt a cow is a year-long program i think that's what makes it kind of unique um you know you, you start the year school year with it you end the school year with it and then if you want to do it again you start the next year with a new calf so the program starts in october and at that time they're assigned a newborn calf a real calf from a real farm, um, which a lot of people don't believe half the time. And then they actually get to meet them at the end. And they're like, oh, this was a real calf the whole time. Um, so, you know, they, they get to meet this calf in October and then they get um, monthly, bi-monthly full updates and with many little updates in between about the farm and about the calves in pictures and videos and in information. We talk about dairy sustainability, dairy in the environment, dairy in our community. Um, you know, there's very specific updates we provide them that they can do at their leisure. And then there's also tons of resources we provide all year long to kind of mix in throughout the year. Um, and then, of course, like I mentioned, we do the live chat at the end of the year where the kids and the teachers can join us on YouTube and get to talk to Farmer Alice and our many other farmers live and ask questions and get to meet their calves in, in real time um, and kind of take that virtual step on the farm and, and feel like they're really interacting with their calves and their students and the, and the farmer. Uh, the program 
it can really be what the teacher makes it. You can choose to just take five minutes and look at the pictures every once in a while and be done. Or you can be some of these really passionate teachers who are, I mean, spending hours of, on, of time on the dairy industry a week because they just, they love it so much. The kids love it so much. It's really neat. That's fantastic. It's, I really, it's, I've heard really great things about the program and I love the fact that I'm getting to kind of dive deeper into that. Um, Alice, do you want to kind of through from a farmer standpoint, you know, how much time is involved in, you know, doing these updates? Do you get like a guide for what to update on? How does that work, Alice? Yeah, so that's a great question. I will tell you from a farmer's perspective, it's not grossly time consuming, but it is kind of what you make of it. So we are given a guide from start to finish. So the very first thing that we do is create like a virtual tour of the farm and introduce ourselves. And we create like a YouTube video in conjunction with um, the Center of Dairy Excellence tech team. So they kind of help us put it together. It's not overly intimidating. And they kind of create like an introduction to our farm and who we are. And then at the beginning of each school year, we have a window of when of a your adopt a cow calf needs to be born somewhere in this time range. This last year we had three calves. The year before we had two. So we are fortunate enough that we usually have multiple calves that can participate. And then we get a step by step, like here's your window of about two weeks. And in this two weeks, we want you to weigh and measure your newborn calf and send us some pictures and then we'll do it again at three months and six months and nine months and um it's really easily laid out for us we it's not like it's due and it's due right now today it's kind of like a two-week window and so whenever it works best for you or the weather's cooperating sometimes it's when the calf is cooperating so it's really spelled out for you. Uh, the time constraint is very minimal, but I'll tell you, they have this really neat opportunity that the kids and the teachers can communicate with us farmers directly through a portal. And I love getting the little letters from the kids. I've received a ton of mail over the last two years um, from students that are asking questions. They're usually elementary school age students and they want to know if like my brown cows make chocolate milk, or, you know, if my calf is happy or, you know, if it's sleeping or, you know, what its personality is like. And um, it's been really fun for us because I have three elementary school age daughters. And so when we get letters from students, I have my daughters respond to the letters. So it's kind of a family event for us. And just like these elementary school age students are working on their handwriting skills and their grammar and their spelling, when my daughters write back to these students, they are also working on their handwriting skills and their grammar. So it's been really a fun project for the whole family. Awesome. That is, it's neat that it is such a family affair and that, you know, the students get so involved in it, you know, writing the calf letters and writing you guys the farmer's letters, things like that. That is really, it's such a wonderful experience and I'm sure that it gives the kids that are in school something to look forward to. Brittany, what kind of feedback have you received throughout, you know, your tenure with the program as far as what teachers and students are thinking? Yeah, thousands and thousands of messages and pictures. It honestly is never ending and it's never surprising. Well, actually, no, I, I said that backwards. We are always surprised by the new things that people are telling us or sharing with us on, on how they shared the story. You know, maybe some more memorable moments for us. Well, one that's just recent, which is spot on to what a lot of people will tell us. A, a teacher, Melanie, re recently reached out as we we're wrapping up the program this year. And she just said, we've loved having an adopted cow this year. We shared our experience with the rest of kindergarten and the entire school by posting our cow and pictures in the hall. Because of this, more classes want to join next year. Um, we have absolutely loved this experience. We cannot wait to adopt. And, you know, that, that kind of general statement happens all the time. We'd love to hear that. Um, you know, of course, we always love getting the the very good suggestion feedback too. That's, that's how we grow and change. Um, but another really cool one that has kind of come out of this, not intentional at all, but we think the reach is unique and different. Um, it kind of spurred from COVID years. We've had a lot of assisted living centers 
sign up and just other community groups like that. Um, again, not necessarily intentional, um, but they signed up because they saw as a way to interact their their residents and find something that reaches a really happy part of their life. A lot of them can relate to it from childhood. So they put it in their building and then it, it creates this awesome opportunity for the residents to talk with their families about this path they're learning about and they're sharing the information with their families. So it's it's going beyond, you know, them already having the knowledge, but then they're sharing it with their families and getting excited about dairy. And dairy is part of a conversation now that was never part of a conversation before. Why else would you talk about dairy at when you go to visit your your grandparents or a parent in a resident in a you know assisted living center? So that was just kind of a, an off thing. You're like, wow, never thought of that. But how cool is that that we're reaching families that way too? Um, but the the endless teacher stories and classroom stories um, never cease to amaze us. That's wonderful, um, and that is really neat that you have people in assisted living centers you know getting involved as well because while you know they're not necessarily out there doing the purchasing for the home they are spreading that message to their families but it also i'm sure just gives them something to look forward to and be active with um you know when sometimes things might get a little bit slow or boring for them so that's really that's really exciting um alice fun stories i guess do you have out of the program Can you guys hear me? Yeah, I was about to ask you, can you repeat the last thing you just said? I don't think either one of us heard your oh, last I'm question. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, what kind of fun memories do you have from the program? I love getting the student letters. They're the best. They are absolutely the best and they're honest anywhere from like, do you eat my cow for cheeseburgers like, to I'm hungry. Do you think there's going to be chocolate milk at lunch today to, you know, do you like steak? <laughs> you know, so the kids, the, the questions are hilarious. They are by far the best part to me, but you know, selfishly, I also really love that my kids are engaged in this too. And I love that they are learning to educate at such a young age too. So when my seven-year-old is writing another seven-year-old about the life of a calf on a farm, I love that she is being an educator in her own way at such a young age. Um, and I would tell you that's probably my favorite part of participating in the program but also every now and then i'll go to the park in the library and it's like celebrity status when like kids recognize me from their live chat or they're like wait a minute are you farmer alice how cool and you're like well i am a celebrity so there's a lot of fun things that come from the program but it's all the joy is really from interacting with the kids and my kids interacting with the kids That's funny. So apparently we have a we have a real celebrity on here today, the farmer Alice. That is fantastic. And I love that the kids recognize you and call you out in public places because that's just great. Um, so would a farm, you know, how do you go about getting a farmer to sign up for this program? Do you seek them out? Do they come to you? You know, how does this work? Yeah, that's a good question. 
Um, so that part of the program for me is actually the easy part, uh, just because I do work with 14 of the 16 checkoff programs across the country to make this program happen on a local level in most of the states in the countries. Um, those checkoff organizations, because they are part of, they are a big part of the funding that's making this happen. We allow them to choose the farms um, since it's sharing their message in their region. Um, so, you know, Alice was a, a little bit unique. You know, she had reached out to me and said she was interested, but she's an amazing spokeswoman and has already been in training. And so a da American Dairy Association Northeast immediately said, absolutely. You know, it wasn't even a hesitation, but um, a lot of the farms, typically they are, the checkoff organizations have a relationship with them already. Um, so then they ask them to be part of the, of the program. That being said, um, I have had many farms just randomly contact us throughout the year and say, hey, we're interested. And um, since I don't have the ultimate last minute, you know, last decision, I do pass that on to all the, fa the partners and say, hey, here are like seven farms that reach out to us in Wisconsin alone, letting you know you've got a lot of interest. Even though I don't get to pick the farms, the interest never ceases to amaze me. Like it's just so many farms reaching out, wanting to be involved, or just at least learning more and how they can do it you know, with their school. Um, so it's, it's uh, I absolutely love that opportunity because then I also get to work with farmers all across the country that I would have never had any other reason to get to know. It's really cool. Well, good. I'm glad that it's a program, you know, that basically people want to do and they're signing up to do because I know sometimes it's hard to get farmers to take on, you know, one more thing, one more thing. Um, and, you know, it can, it doesn't seem like it's that much work, but I mean, to some farmers, it very much could probably seem like a daunting task. So that really says a lot about the program that you have farmers that are just really excited and wanting to participate and participating multiple years in a row like Alice has. So that definitely says so much about the program and that's really exciting. One of the, you know, things that, you know, as a farmer, you know, you have a lot of misconceptions about the dairy industry. How are you handling those misconceptions and educating, you know, through the Adopt-A-Calf program? I think it is super easy to talk to children because their minds are so pliable. And so they're less likely to come into this with preconceived ideas, but also they get to see the care that we take care of our animals and they get to see like their housing and their environment and what they're fed. And they see that we're keeping up with their growth. And we talk about like, we have a vet that comes to the farm every other week, week and they see the intentional care that farmers are taking with their animals. And I think that instead of necessarily like breaking misconceptions, we're teaching them early on the investment that farmers are making in their animals. But also through like the virtual tours and like some of the letters and the chats and things like that, we can talk about what things farmers are doing for the environment too and how their food's produced or we introduce the ideas of like technology on the farm. So instead of like myth busting, I think we're teaching them before there's those misconceptions there. And honestly, I hope that those children are also going to their parents and saying, hey, today we learned about robots milking cows, or we learned about GPS used to plant fields. So I hope that by educating kids, they're also educating their parents. But I think that we are reaching children before those myths are kind of ingrained in their brain. And we have an opportunity to work with them when they're around. It's just so pliable. So I, I think I think the adopted calf program strikes when the iron is hot and these kids are hungry for information and they're open to receiving it and we are teaching them before they have the misconceptions. Great answer, Alice. And I think you answered another one of my questions while you answered that. So I guess we'll move to the next one. Uh, but that is a really good point. You know, I also have young children and they are, they're constantly hungry for that information, want to learn, they want to keep learning. Obviously mine being on a dairy farm, you know, they've already got a pretty good handle on that. And they take every opportunity to teach their classmates about farming, you know, in the classroom themselves as typical third graders. Uh, but that is a really good point. And hopefully, you know, hopefully they are going home and telling mom and dad how excited that they are and what their calf was doing today or what farmer Alice is doing today. That's 
it gives them, you know, besides just standard schoolwork to talk about. And that also, I think, is really exciting. So how do you think farm programs like Adopt-A-Calf um, influence the future of agriculture? That's a really great question. You know, I think, I think it's all about experiences in our life, which is what drives our decisions in life. You know, if, like if someone told me you should try uh, goat milk, something different, if I don't have any experience with it or don't know a farmer or don't have anything to recall from, my immediate reaction is going to be, I'm not going to try it, or I'm not going to, or I'm going to do some research in the first sentence I see on Google, I'm probably going to believe but that's just how fast society works. So I think the really unique part about programs like this, and it, it goes along with what Alice was saying, you know, we're, we're kind of beating, beating them to the punch, you know, we're, we're giving them the information that's important and creating those experiences at a very young age. So that way, when they do start to develop higher level thinking, it's like, you know what, I learned the truth about the dairy industry. And even when something is said, or something is put out there as a misconception, they can make that decision very logically and say, I can at least pull on this one experience. So having something like this gives them an experience to go back to, to trust an industry, to make a decision about buying real products or knowing that a farmer is always doing their best to take care of the animals. I think, you know, we focus on animal care first with the adopt a cow program because that resonates the most, right? We care about how we take care of ourselves. And so it's very easily relatable to being able to say, how well we take care of our cows. Um, so yeah, I think it's all about just creating those experiences for people to have a recall button and say, you know what? I learned Farmer Alice cares pretty much more, you know, almost cares more about the cows than, than their own family because they're fed first and milked first, you know, they're cared for first. Um, it's just a really great testimony to how how amazing uh, dairy, dairy cows have it in life. So, yeah. I just want to pipe in and say, you know, you don't know what you don't know. And so you don't know what careers exist in agriculture, specifically in the dairy industry, if you've never been exposed to it. So I'm going to say for me, it never once crossed my mind that I would go into any version of agriculture and specifically the dairy industry. And my milk came from the grocery store and I never thought about it more than that. But let's say you really love technology and you love animals. And is there a career out there that you can pair that? I hope that in through this program that we're introducing the the multiple avenues that you can do. And also demonstrating that there is a future in agriculture. There is a future in dairy. And there's lots of career opportunities. Maybe you don't want to be a farmer. Maybe you want to work on equipment. Or maybe you want to work with the technology. Or maybe you want to be a large animal vet. But or an animal nutritionist. But I hope that through this program that we're exposing that there's a lot of career opportunities in agriculture that maybe you had never even heard of before. Awesome. What a great point, Alice. That was, yeah, maybe we can draw some more people into agriculture through that program if they do see that there, you know, is a potential for a career in agriculture and something that they would have never dreamed possible if not for the program. So that's a really excellent point. And I guess um, with that being said, you know, Alice, what advice would you give to farmers that want to get involved with Adopt-A-Calf? You know, how do you go about encouraging them, things like that? I would tell you that we have a unique voice and that if we don't tell our stories, someone else will tell it for us. And um, I'm passionate about telling the story because I feel like there's so many, like Brittany mentioned earlier, like everybody wants to go to Google and I want to teach children and to hopefully reach their parents also that if they have questions about agriculture, they can ask a farmer that we're more than open to the conversation and to the dialogue. Um, I know the number one thing that a farmer says is I don't have time for one more thing. And I would tell you that Brittany and her team have made it really, really easy um, we actually use technology also to communicate back and forth, to upload our photos, to fill in the information. It's literally a form I fill out. And it's knowledge that most of the time, you know, off the top of your head, like how much does a calf weigh at three months old? Well, 
if you're working with your animals every day, you kind of know what to expect. It's not like you need to actually weigh this calf every single time. Like you can probably look at the calf and guess. It's super, super user friendly. I would tell you that it brings joy to our family and to our life. So you can look at it like work and you don't have to answer these student letters. There's times where I've gotten so many letters that I'm overwhelmed and I'm like, you know what? We're going to send one letter to the teacher and I'm going to throw in some stickers of cows and they can pass them out to their students or whatever. So like you can, like there's busy times and you don't have to answer every single letter. If you don't have children that want to help you be involved, you know, I simply write a letter back to the teacher sometimes. So you can make it what you want and you, including the amount of time that it takes. Um, but I am very passionate that as farmers, that if we don't tell this story in agriculture, there is somebody who is more than willing to do it for us. I want to control what that message looks like. And I want to do that. And I'm so passionate about that because I didn't know. And I, I feel like I'm talking to my former self. I'm talking to my childhood self. I'm talking to my teenage self. And so I feel really passionate about, about spreading that message. Awesome. I think that that's a great note to close out that chapter of the podcast on. I love it. I'm so excited about the program and to see, you know, the things that the program accomplishes in the future and how many children that it does, you know, positively affect their life and give them that, you know, thing to look forward to going to school every day and whatnot. So I do love to ask a fun question that was left by another guest from the podcast. So I am, of course, going to ask you ladies this fun question. So, and you guys can fight over whoever goes first. If you all of a sudden had to be in a different sector of agriculture, not dairy, what agriculture sector would you choose and why? This might be very naive and just um, a little bit corny. I, I had, this is ridiculous, but I had never seen a cotton plant in person before until I just visited Georgia a year ago. And I was so mesmerized and have like went on trying to self-educate myself about co the cotton industry. And I'm very thankful for the cotton industry, for the clothing that I wear every day. And also, you know, we're feeding a byproduct for our cows. So I just, I think that's an industry that, I didn't realize how much little I knew when I like literally felt like I could watch a cotton ball grow out of the ground. It blew my mind. Um, and I think I would want to dive into that because I know so little. Um, I think I would love it. I think it'd be really neat. So the first I'm information is I probably want to be. I would say that I would probably want to be in some version of fruit farming, but really that's because we eat so much fruit in my house. I feel like I would do myself a favor. So I need some strawberry plants and some apple trees, some peach trees. Um, and the possibilities are endless with fruit. Um, so we can make jam. We can, you know, I, I might be a little homesteader in the future. You just wait and see. Alice, come on over. My family has an orchard. You can you can come come oh, try. Oh yes, that. make some apple cider. I want to make some jam. I want to make some apple crisp. I feel like I could do a lot with an orchard. Maybe maybe a serious kitchen upgrade would be needed, but I feel like I could do a lot with an orchard. There you go. So, Brittany, the thing that comes to mind when I see cotton farming is the. The picture that goes around on sometimes and it's like the cotton harvester and the little cotton balls at night and it's like nope it's not a concert it's actually a cotton picker so that's what comes to mind plus i can that's definitely see you making jam in, in your kitchen and doing all the things so i love that um i also like to leave the episode with a little piece of you know advice and stuff that motivates you uh, to be the best version of yourself. Alice, do you have some advice for us? I would tell you over the years, I've heavily relied on my faith. And Philippians 4.13, I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. 
many a times in my life, especially transition periods, I cannot do this alone. And I'm so lucky that I don't have to do this alone. And I remind myself every day when I wake up and I feel overwhelmed or I feel underqualified um, to do something that I don't have to do it by myself. Fantastic, Alice. Uh, Brittany, do you have some little bits of advice for us? Sure. Yeah, Alice, that was, I wrote that one down, but I wondered if you were going to say it. So um, I equally am, uh, I, I live by that more so in the last year or two, as, especially as just life continues to change. But another one that I, I had here is I, I guess almost the opposite. I don't ever want to catch myself saying, if only I had taken the chance. And so it's it's kind of one of those things that I, I keep in the forefront of my mind that I don't want that to ever be the sentence coming out of my mouth. As an as a organization, we chose not to say that and embraced when we went from a thousand classes to 70,000 classes literally in like two days because COVID happened and we went viral and it was nuts. And we could have said, no, we could have said, nope, we're shutting this down. Um, we can't handle this, but we said, let's take a chance. Um, and there's a lot of things in life that I was just, you know, no, I'm going to take this chance. And I'm, I'm so thankful that I have, and it's the reason I'm able to be here with you guys and, and work with Alice and work with amazing people in the dairy industry. And um, so I, I guess the phrase that I, live by because I don't ever want to have to say it is if only I had taken the chance. Awesome. I love to live by that as well, because you don't know what life is going to bring you if you get that chance. Ladies, thank you so much for joining me today on the podcast. Alice, if you want to plug where people can find you. So yeah, um, a, a place where you can find the Adopt a Cow program, you can go to discoverdairy.com backslash adopt, and there you can go ahead and register for the program. Registration is open now until September 15th, and um, anyone is welcome, Boy Scout groups, Girl Scout groups, 4-H, FFA, um, you know, elementary, middle school, high school, libraries, assisted living centers, whatever it may be, homeschool groups, they're all welcome to sign up. Um, but of course, if you're a farm listening to this as well, we are happy to have you reach out to us. Um, you can reach out to us on Facebook, our website, anything. And we'd love to get you involved in some way, whether it's through this program or to give you resources to do this on your own um, with your own school or doing your own thing. We've, we've got handouts and things we're welcome to provide you. That's part of our service at the Zero Excellence Foundation is helping other farms make these types of things a reality um, if they want to do it on a smaller, intimate scale. Um, but I'll also let Alice share, you know, um, if you want to reach out to her, she's an awesome farm to connect with if you want to hear some feedback and, and hear the nitty gritty of what it's like to be a host farm. Um, and she's got awesome platforms to follow too. Thank you so much, Britt. Yeah, if you want to follow along, I love to share our story of raising our family on a farm and the work that we do for the environment and with our animals and the partners that we work with. 
um, from our animal nutritionist to our seed companies, et cetera. So you can follow me at Hills and Holsteins on both Facebook and Instagram. And of course, next year, awesome. I would love for you to join. Uh, yes, definitely follow along so with I Alice's cannot... adopt a cat. Hit it. Great. Thank you so much, ladies, for joining me today. And for those of you listening, we're going to do our best to edit. And hopefully we can deal with this lovely Wi-Fi situation I've got going here. Um, but link where you can find both of these lovely ladies in the show notes. And we will talk to you next week. Thank you, everybody. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, my gosh. Freaking internet.